In this video, we're going to look at some of my highlights from the July 2022's Power BI feature update, including things like the metrics visuals updates, the new network base function, and the new updates to the Azure Maps visual. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So let's start this update with the error bars feature, which is now generally available. And in fact, this feature I've already covered in greater detail in a separate video. So if you haven't yet, please check that one out. Along with this feature being generally available, they've also added a few new options to customize your error bars even further. So the first thing is you can now see the actual values of your error bars in your visual. You have a new option called error labels that lets you customize the font size, colors, etc. You can also change the type of error bars that you set, like percentage, percentile, or standard deviation. So you're not just limited to showing the field values themselves. And in fact, in my video, I looked at how to show the error bars and convert it as a percentage. So this addition definitely replaces that solution. They've also added this make symmetrical option, which allows you to set just the upper bound of your visual, and it will simply mirror what you've put on the lower bound. Field map is now available as a layer in your Azure Maps visual. This allows you to show geographical regions with colored in shapes. You can customize the colors the same way as your other details like conditional formatting. So you can change the color by gradient or based on field values. And if you watch my videos long enough, you'll know how I feel about the field map visuals. I'm not exactly a fan of them because they sometimes misrepresent the scale of the value that you're showing by the size of the geographical region. So if you have regions that have and are roughly the same size this could work but otherwise using it is not something that i would look at really you can now create composite models from data sets that have dynamic mquery parameters on if you don't remember this basically allows data sets using direct query mode to create dynamic filters which normally won't be available in this mode text formatting options like bold italic underlines is now available in the header tooltips. At first I was excited about this because I thought it's about being able to change the formatting of the headers or titles within texts, similar to how the IBCS standards recommends. But it seems that this change or this update is only for the header tooltips. So we'll keep our hopes up that they add this feature for the titles as well. There are lots of new updates on the metrics uh, this month, formerly called goals. Metrics visuals can now be integrated into Power BI reports directly alongside other visuals. So from the visual pane metrics, you can add an existing metric in your Power BI service or create a new one directly in Power BI desktop. You can set things like connecting data to your data sets or to certain rules. You can configure the options and turn on or off different metric elements. This feature won't be available until next month though. So once it's out, I'll try to cover it on its own video so we can see how you can fully utilize this feature for yourself. Now you have an option to move or copy scorecards to a different workspace. So this is useful if you already have an existing template of a scorecard and you don't really want to configure everything all over again. You also have the option to follow metrics now, which allows you to stay on top of them because you will easily find them featured from the metrics hub in your Power BI service. And finally, you can now share direct links to a metric. The URL now, once you have the metric open, will include the metric ID. So if you hit share and your users open that link, you will take them straight to that metric. A new DAX function is now available called Network Days. So in the past, I created a video showing you how to create your own net workdays in Power Query because Power BI doesn't 
have this already available well now it is so there's no excuse to start using it now net work days basically allows you to count number of working days between two dates so dates like weekends or holidays would be excluded in this list the function does have a few options that you can configure related to these exclusions, which I will cover in a future video. So if you don't want to miss out, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can get notified when I have new stuff coming out. Composite models now support multi-role RLS, which is the ability to set more than one user into a role level security role. If you want to know more about RLS, I have a video already covering that. So check it out if you haven't yet. You can now connect to Data Mart sources in Power BI Desktop. So in this, you have two options. The connect, which auto-generates a data set for you, so you can start creating reports quickly. However, the preferred option is to connect to a SQL endpoint, which treats the Data Mart as a SQL connection, allowing you to take advantage of things like query folding or choosing the tables uh, that you want to bring in for better performance. You can now preview and export data directly from the Data Hub in Power BI service. Data Hub is where you'll find data sets that you have access to. You can explore these data sets, which can and will show you the tabular data that it holds within it. You can preview the data it contains, and from this view, you will have the option to export this into a table. So it's handy if you need to process this data outside of Power BI. Data in space for the Power BI mobile app is now available, and it's basically an augmented reality technology that anchors Power BI contents around the real world. So it's good when you're putting your data in context to something in the physical world uh, that it describes. I haven't actually tried this one because I don't have a use case for it yet, but I'll try to find an excuse and cover it sometime soon. You can now track multiple milestones and targets from the mobile app, making it easy to keep tabs on your progress. And that's really it for this video. So as usual, I didn't cover everything that was included in this month's update, only the ones that I found interesting. But if you want to read the full list of the releases that has been released this month, I'll leave a link to the blog posts in the description box below. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I need to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.